Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Brightworks. Super excited to have you here today for what should be a very interesting match. We are on Bismuth Valley today, an all lanes map, and I love it. Love, love, love this map because it means that we get to the action right away. There's no messing around in the back line. Oh, who's going to go air? Who's going to go eco? Nope, right to the action, and I love that. A whole bunch. If you couldn't tell, I've had three cups of coffee today, and I'm just absolutely thrilled to get right into commentating. I've got loads of games that I want to cast today, and in just a couple hours here, I'm going to be starting up the stream, recording this a little bit early, and uh, I'm super excited to do that stream. For anybody who might not know, we do have the official Brightworks Discord that I'll link the uh, invite link down below. Uh, that sentence didn't come out right. <laughs> I will attach that link to join the Discord down below in the uh, in the description of this video. So if you want to hop into the Brightworks Gaming Discord channel, talk with some of the uh, fellow wonderful community members out there, discuss the games, talk about stuff, submit replays, all that good stuff, I will have that down there for you uh, in the in the description. Now this game was sent to us by none other than the man, the myth, the legend themselves, Nostradamus. Woo -hoo -hoo. Nostradamus, famous for the Nostradamus maneuver, which we're all a fan of. And uh, well, I, I I don't want to spoil anything, uh, but there was a there was a hint that something spicy might go down in this game as well. They sent this one over, and I am just thrilled to get a a good proper look at this. Super super excited today. Wanted to make sure I had enough energy to look at this today. Wow, we're going for an air lab and a bot lab. We're going to be able to afford all that. Nostradamus is going to be the blue team leader today on the eastern side. Meanwhile, our red team leader is going to be Skyworm. Uh, not a name I'm super familiar with, but certainly has a decent true skill and plenty of chevrons, so uh, they should be well familiar with this game. They're at the uh, they're at they're they're hitting that solar limit count. You know, we're we're getting up there three. I think I say uh, two to four is pretty acceptable, but uh, if we we see more than that, I'm going to get real worried for you, Skyworm. Skyrim did get some units across the map, but they didn't send them into the enemy's bases. So, uh, I, yeah, I don't know if I can award the... Well, I guess I guess this engagement was, uh, was only possible because Skyworm sent a unit across. So I guess we'll give Skyworm the official get a unit out and about on the field award. Despite, uh, despite no eco damage being brought. But you know what? They tried their best, and that's all that we can hope for. Meanwhile, looks like Wit Abysm has uh, sent some techs across the map as well, and these are going to be heading right into the economy centers of Ogaklinge, Ogaklinge, uh, and Lullington, or uh, at the very least, scoping out the joint. Nostradamus has an air transport here, and we are moving the commander forward using it. I think that's a great idea. If we could get the commander super far forward here, if we could displace just a tremendous amount of the enemy's resources by putting the commander in a really inconvenient spot, I think it would be absolutely phenomenal. So I actually really like this a whole lot. I'm surprised that we could afford all this. I, I really didn't think we were going to be able to get a uh, bot lab up as well as the air lab. But I suppose there's just enough metal production on this map in order to fund all of it. This map is an interesting one for anybody who might not be familiar. There are two different types of metal spots on this map. There are 2.8s and 1.8s. Obviously the 2.8s are a little more valuable. Everything right down the middle of this map is going to be a 2.8, so these are very, very important spots to contest. And so you want to get your commander out here and capturing as many of these 2.8s as possible. Typically, the strategy that I would recommend is you move your commander forward, capturing the 2.8s, and then you move a constructor behind, ah, just like this. So you can see the constructor is capturing the 1.8s, whereas the commander is moving forward to worry about the higher value spots. I think that's a great idea, and it's a great way to get a tremendous amount of value. Meanwhile, Mr. Thomas is moving the commander forward. We're going to try and take this forward position here by loss two. 2 one uh, going to be moving the commander into a really inconvenient spot. There's no anti-air out, or at the very least, no fighters. There might be anti-air turrets scattered around the map, but at least for this lane right here, we don't have any. Uh, Lollington is, uh, yep, okay, so the commander is spotted. Lollington is going to have a commander headed into the into their base, essentially. Uh, we need an anti-air turret. We need anti-air immediately. Okay, we started the laser turret. That's not going to work. Mr. Dramas' commander has dropped, he takes out the light laser turrets, takes out the bot lab, going to be taking down the constructors as well, and what a phenomenal play. Loss 221 has been uh, eradicated, or at the very least hundreds of metal has been spilt on the uh, on the ground here. Loss 221's base is in tatters. Meanwhile, Mr. Dramas isn't done yet, that commander is essentially uncontested. There's no units in the back line, because, while well, they were all headed towards the front line, obviously. Uh, and now the commander is essentially going to have free reign back here. We need some anti-air turrets. Where are the anti-air turrets? Oh, oh, we do have them up now. Set the commander down, set the commander down. 
Put it down, put it down. There we go. Okay, the commander does land, which means that it's going to be able to continue its uh, tirades here. <laughs> Nostradamus is taking out not one, but two players. And with that, I think that is definitely... Well, he hasn't taken them out yet, I should, I should say. But uh, we are getting pretty close here. No defenses left in this base. So uh, the commander is looking devastatingly healthy here. With two bases down, I think this definitely justifies the amount of metal that will inevitably be left on the ground when this commander does get taken care of, assuming it gets taken care of. We do have some forces being routed here, and as long as they are microed properly, they should be... Oh, wow. <laughs> as long as they are microed properly, he says, uh, as they all fall to a single D-gun. I'm completely distracted here, as uh, this suddenly has become the foci of this game. I don't even know what else to look at here, as now Wallington is forced to remake a bot lab on the front lines. Plenty of metal to do so, but the economy infrastructure is completely ravaged here. Meanwhile, more and more pawns are just being thrown into the fires here, degunned, disintegrated, eradicated, and removed from existence all at once. Beamer turrets are coming up here, and those are quite dangerous. The commander is going to have to be a little bit wary of those, but certainly we could cloak for short periods of time in order to deal with that. But it looks like we're not going to move up north. We're actually just going to move over to the eastern side and try and harass... Uh, which player is that here? Oh yeah, Ogre Klinge. I'm going to assume that your, your name is to be pronounced with some sort of... Uh, some sort of like Celtic, uh, maybe maybe uh, like an Anglo uh, sort of accent here, and go with Olga Olga Clinch, or maybe it's just supposed to be Ogre Clinch. Either way, a lot of trouble here. Is there's no static defense back here again? We were expecting ticks. We were expecting maybe a grunt or two. We weren't expecting a commander, and there has been absolutely nothing to deal with this because, of course, there's still been pressure on the front line by Wit Abysm, as well as M M T I W two Mateo. Anyway. Nostradamus is still tearing through this base here. We can see the commander strength uh, showing its showing itself here as the uh, commander is easily able to tear down those light laser turrets. Very little care. We are finally redirecting some forces back this way, but Nostradamus is still at 50% health. This commander has barely been tickled, and now these these uh, enemies, or rather these uh, red players, I should say, enemies of Nostradamus, uh, are going to be in a quite quite difficult. Uh, predicament here. Yeah, uh, that's three bases down with a single commander drop. Absolutely justifies the sacrifice of the meager 1,250 metal. We've killed that much in bot labs and vehicle labs and that sort of thing. So uh, certainly our, our damage has been done here. But Nostradamus isn't quite finished yet as we're going to continue moving into the uh, into the back line here. An air lab was erected for Lost 221 who is going to try and cloak their commander. I would have expected anything else here. Um, oh, don't tell me you're gonna degun. Oh, don't tell me you're gonna degun. Commander is cloaked, eating up all the energy, so we can't be do we can't do anything here. Yeah, eventually we're gonna start attacking this commander with our own commander, uh, which is a solution. It it's a solution. <laughs> it's not not ideal, but it's certainly the uh, best option here because we really don't have any other units. Nostradamus' commander will go down, and fortunately for Lost 221, the, uh, their commander will remain with just 9% health. We need to turn that cloaking field off. We're burning through our energy uh, like it's nobody's business. But uh, aside from that, the commander shenanigans are finally taken down by Nostradamus, who has, in the meantime, been macroing on the back of this. Look at all these constructors that were built here. Not sure if that was intentional or not, but it is going to mean that we have a tremendous amount of build power in the back line here. The purple player is doing phenomenally to hold this middle section, as well as MTIW, who is also doing a great job holding onto that. Master Toby, being sure to fortify up this section of the map as well, which is really important. Uh, any, any units that leak through here are going to essentially come back this way, or go down this way, or go down this way. And all three of those are directly into the attack lane of Nostradamus. So it's really, really important that both Master Toby, as well as Wittabism, as well as MTIW, hold their lanes here. It's the only thing sparing Nostradamus from a total collapse. Meanwhile, players in the uh, in the back lane are rebuilding here. The, essentially, the only reason that this has been so easy to contest for the purple player, uh, as well as our sort of uh, seafoam blue player here, are uh, not quite aquamarine. Some sort of some sort of shade of blue. I think seafoam might just be the right color there. Anyways, uh, the reason it's been so easy for them to con contest, of course, is because all of the uh, resource production for Wallington as well as uh, Olgarhlinj have been destroyed in the back lane. There's there's nothing left back here. Uh, that D-gun is one hell of a weapon. Meanwhile, a nice little battle over here as uh, rocket bots are facing each other. The age-old enemies of each other. We have the uh, we have the maces brought out as well. 
very, 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 very powerful stuff here. We are, oh, we're actually resing some of the bots over here. We get that pawn back up. Apparently Skyworm cares about every unit in their army, a very loving general. Gold, please, not so kind. More focused on the victory. We have energy converters coming up. We have windmills coming up. We have all sorts of economy growth happening in the back line here. We're not too worried about grabbing... Oh, okay, we are grabbing the metal extractors. I was going to say, this is definitely going to be worth grabbing. That's an extra... Ooh, I don't know. Let's call it two per each of these. Two, four, six, uh, seven, eight, nine metal, give or take. Probably closer to eight metal per second. You're going to be seeing out of all of these uh, metal extractors right here. Uh, definitely worth it. That's, that's uh, maybe like a... 25% increase in your economy at this point in the game and it's going to be it's going to be a huge amount after not too long It's not going to take long to pay back all that stuff a regular metal extractor costs 50 metal to uh, to build whereas a uh, You know at an extraction rate of, of 1.8 or 2.8. It's not going to take very long at all in order to repay that bunch of medium tanks have broken through here by Balalai Balalaika Bal Balalaika. Yeah, Balalaika <laughs> Bala, like, I'm not sure if that means anything or if it's just like, uh, you know, just like a name that, uh, you know, just, just means the name of the person. Uh, but either way, these medium tanks have broken through here and they are going to be causing a little bit of damage. Uh, they do find a couple of metal extractors. That's nice. They're a little bit preoccupied with a whole bunch of Centurions that are coming out here. Uh, Witabism is using their massive economic lead to produce Centurions instead of pawns or maces or anything like that. So, uh, well, I guess we do have maces on the back here. So, they, uh, the, eventually that will be... Uh, that will be mopped up, is all I'm trying to say. Those maces, those centurions, they're strong enough to deal with these medium tanks. They're not quite fast enough, though. That's the only problem. So these medium tanks, as long as they uh, stay still, those units are going to have no trouble disassembling them. Um, but if they were moving about, they might have been a little bit harder to catch. Overall, that many tanks to take out six metal extractors, I don't think that's quite worth it. Uh, so long as those metal extractors get rebuilt almost as quickly as we can. We do have T2 out and about here. It looks like a T2 was handed over to uh, Nostradamus here, who is using the T2 properly, using it to uh, upgrade those metal extractors and get that T2 economy up and running as quickly as we can. Uh, you can see what we're doing here is flying this T2 around using the transport here to start up the T2 labs, or the T2 metal extractors rather, and then we are finishing the T2 with whatever other constructors we have, uh, and then continuing to move the T2 constructor around so that we can start up all the other metal extractors. It's a great way to get the economy up and running really, really quickly. Just another way to uh, very, very efficiently use a single T2 builder. Always, always effective to use that transport. Always a good idea to use it anyways. With these T2 metal extractors up and running, things are going to be looking a whole lot better. Somehow this constructor survived that tank harassment. I think if those tanks had broken through here and they had just gone in this path or gone down this way, uh, they could have gotten a lot more damage here as Nostradamus is effectively not producing units whatsoever. Um, but instead, they're actually, unfortunately, due to a lack of vision, choosing the incorrect pass. Let me wipe that off your screen here. I was just about to show you the vision of this player. And you can see we have no scouting information. And a lot of that comes down to the early game failure to get ticks or grunts or pawns or anything like that across the map. Uh, really, that's where a lot of this scouting comes in before you have any sort of aerial scouting or spy bots or anything like that. Although we are starting to see T2 out here, mostly for the blue team. Well, we might see some T2 maybe up north or down south. I just got those mixed up, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, we have T2 lab coming up here, but it's going to be coming up very slowly because we do have our T1 as well as a bunch of T1 solar panel uh, still up and running for Albus. So that T2 is going to be a long ways away. Meanwhile, we do have an agitator up on the front lines raining down Hellfire on these uh, metal extractors here, denying that 2.8 metal per second, which is definitely very, very nice. We do have these hounds out now. Very, very good against these medium tanks. Uh, although gunslingers are better, actually. I've been I've been looking at this recently, and yeah, a gunslinger for a, a little over double the cost is actually tremendously more effective against these medium tanks. It takes about three shots for the uh, gunslinger to take down a medium tank, but it also has that impulse, so it, it stuns it for a second. It, it basically slows the tank down, uh, which is really, really important because it means that the tank can no longer... Uh, move. It, can, it can't use that movement advantage that it normally has, uh, which is really, really nice. Eventually, these medium tanks are going to be cleaned up here. These uh, these mortar hounds, they're, they're, not super, uh, they're not super quick to dismantle these tanks, but eventually we are going to shut them all down. And with that, the pink aggression is going to be largely dismantled, although the uh, green line has been taken, taken down pretty badly as well. 
Some reclaim would not be bad though, and there's plenty of metal extractors that need to be rebuilt at this point. We need to get some T2 constructors out, maybe more than one. Um, at the very least, this constructor should probably just head straight up the line front to all the way to the front and upgrade all of these metal extractors along the way. Meanwhile, Nostradamus is just going for the technology lead here. We are just going to be continuing to start up a advanced fusion reactor. Do we have the metal? We don't have the energy. That's the problem. Ah, wind speed is currently tanking. <laughs> oh no. Nostradamus' entire uh, energy production relying on the wind speed, and eventually it's going to come back online, but at least for the time being, that is uh, unfortunate uh, wind speed. It also doesn't help that we're building so much build power. It is going to be necessary in the long run, but at least for the time being, it means that a lot of our energy is being stalled out into construction turrets. Now we finally have the, the resources going directly into the advanced fusion reactor. You can see that with all of these construction turrets, this should not take very long. It looks like we must be reclaiming off of the front lines somewhere because there's tons of metal coming in here. That or I'm crazy, uh, which is possible. I am, I am often called a madman. Witivism has got a couple of gauntlets on the front lines here, which have shut down the metal extractors over here, so I think that definitely is their value. They can't reach very much else over here, so at least for the time being, them being able to shut down those uh, shut down those metal extractors is costing every second more and more metal down the drain, which is effectively the same as killing units here. Now this is quite nice, we are going to get some free pawn kills, basically anything that comes within range here is going to take a devastating hit. Any T1 that comes within range. We do have a fat boy coming out here for the red team who is slowly rebuilding. Looks like Ogre Klinge eventually went up to T2. Wow, we went for a T1 bot lab, a T1, uh, sorry, a T1 vehicle lab, a T1 bot lab, and a T2, or T2 bot lab. Getting all my labs mixed up today. This fat boy could definitely do some work. Those Rocketeers will melt in an instant. The single shot that this fat boy puts out is a tremendous amount of damage. You can see the huge AoE on this thing. Uh, yeah, it'll absolutely shred an, uh, a T1 army. Even a T2 army, it'll do pretty, pretty devastating work against, but uh, certainly T1 won't stand a single chance. Meanwhile, the wind speed is back up to normal, which means that we are fully into the uh, into the, the T2 economy. We can see this advanced fusion reactor is now up and running. We're building plenty of energy converters here to uh, produce that juicy, juicy metal off of the excess wind speed, as well as the advanced fusion reactor power. And for what it's worth, these are coming online relatively quickly. Um, looks like we are... Oh, interesting. We're, <laughs> we're trying to eat up some of these so that we can fit a uh, advanced metal extractor. Yeah, there we go. Is it really worth it, other than just having the build power? I don't know, you tell me. Um, it's an extra 600 build power, probably doesn't really matter, all things considered. Uh, it is funny though, it's not a problem we see very often. But the economy is coming up nonetheless, we do have more and more energy converters uh, up and running. All of these are fluctuating on and off, which means that they're not being 100% utilized. Uh, but it looks like they might be able to be if we uh, if we move our slider down because it looks like there must be a huge excess of energy coming out of our teammates here. That and the wind speed is certainly helpful. Having it up near maximum at 15 is going to be a tremendous amount of wind production. If we just look at this solar farm alone, and I guess we could throw in some of these as well, uh, we can see... Ooh, ooh, don't want the metal extractor, just the windmills, please. There we go. We can see a whopping total of 1,425, so more than a fusion reactor. Uh, worth of energy here, and that is really, really nice for wind wind uh, production, which is pretty cheap. A bunch of these hounds are getting into a kerfuffle with some of these uh, tiger tanks, and they're finding it much more difficult than they probably anticipated. Those tigers, they're uh, reasonably tanky, they move pretty quick, and they fire super, super fast, so those hounds are definitely less than ideal for pushing into that. Uh, meanwhile, we have a little bit of a aggression here. We have some hounds mixed in with some T1 units, some artillery, all sorts of stuff. But there's plenty of hounds here for our MTIW, M2, M2, is that what it is? M2? I don't know. Either way, we have plenty of units from uh, our Seafoam Green player, Seafoam Blue player here to make sure that things are going to look A-OK. -okay. Some recluses have been resurrected here on the front lines. I wonder, uh, okay, they were just part of a general resurrection uh, order here. We're going to be bringing these recluses back online, and they definitely can do some damage. They are a siege weapon. You can use these to fire at long range against these light laser turrets. Uh, certainly firing over the cliffs at these uh, hounds is definitely another great option. Yeah, really nicely done resurrecting those. I actually think that could be hugely strategically advantageous. Boy, that was a sentence and a half, huh? 
Master Toby now forced to deal with a whole bunch of Tiger tanks that are pushing forward. These tanks find the commander and they are going to start running away, trying not to get caught in the commander explosion. The, co the commander will cloak to try and get out of there. Uh, the tanks have to be wary now because there's essentially a massive invisible landmine walking around that they do not want to step on. The northern half is collapsing as well. That's a massive amount of Sheldons. 19 Sheldons, and that's enough to snowball pretty catastrophically here as they start marching forward. They're going to be... They have enough firepower in their numbers to uh, start devastating things, even these medium tanks, which famously give them a little bit of trouble here. The Hounds are here to stand guard, but it is probably not going to be enough, but the Mauser definitely will be. The Mauser outranged the Sheldon. Uh, at least I believe they do. A uh, range of 940 versus a range of 850. Yeah, so the Bowser outranged the Sheldon, uh, as is expected. Uh, and that does mean that there is certainly going to be quite a lot of... Uh, yeah, quite a, quite a lot of contention here in the northern half now as T2 vehicles begin to roll out to contest the T2 bots. Meanwhile, Tigers have broken through, and they are headed straight into the economy centers of the blue team here. Nostradamus has gone for a third fusion reactor. We are on T2 vehicles here, and we're going to start pumping out a bunch of lightning tanks. I do love to see it. We need to get some units out on the field. Some T2 vehicles would be absolutely phenomenal. If we could get some starlights on the front line to help keep those uh, Tiger numbers down, and if we could get maybe a couple of Mauser in the middle of the map, uh, even just handing them off to Widabism just so that we have some way to continually apply pressure. That would be phenomenal. I missed it back here, but it looks like a couple of blitzes have actually ran by and have made it into the back lines of the pink player here. They're, uh, they're trying to be eaten up by these uh, construction vehicles. Not tremendously effective. Meanwhile, the Tigers have made it into the base. Ooh, massive explosion there as a fusion reactor does explode. Uh, they made it into the base of our Seafoam player here, our uh, MTIW as the tanks begin to tear them apart. Now, there are plenty of hounds to uh, clean all this up, and eventually they will, but at least for the time being, the Tigers are still looking relatively healthy. This last one will, at the very least, scout a little bit, and that's good. We, we needed the scouting desperately here for the red team as they uh, sort of didn't have any vision whatsoever. They, they, they kind of lacked that early game vision, and they never found a way to regain it. Uh, the, the air player here uh, just neglected to build scouts uh, which meant that essentially the aerial aerial vision was just really lacking. You can see this is this is what the red team sees right now. Uh, they really don't even know where Nostradamus is at. Maybe very very small inkling of a clue based on the, uh, the the turrets that they've seen, but they haven't seen the economy, the massive economy cheese that Nostradamus is going for here. Fourth fusion reactor is up and running, and this is plenty of uh, this this would be plenty of economy to fund T3 production. Um, certainly T2 production, you're, you're basically ready to transition into a late game here with this much, uh, this, this much economy at hand. It looks like we're not done yet though, as we're building more build power to continue scaling this economy. And I think that's, I mean, not a bad idea. You always want to keep scaling your economy whenever possible. We are up to a easy 225 ish metal per second, which is ridiculous. Especially considering how little of map presence we actually have. Uh, eventually that just becomes irrelevant here as all of the uh, economy switches to energy converter economy. Uh, we are producing tons of Mauser, which is really, really nice to see. The Mauser are slowly rolling out here. Uh, well, not too slowly, actually. Uh, but the lighting tanks are out as well, and so that's going to be really nice. Uh, it looks like a little production facility was given to MTIW. That's very nice, very, very kind of him. Making sure to keep those uh, keep those other commanders in the game. Don't have much power though. We can certainly hand over the windmills. That's an easy way to give a easy 1,000 power. Yep, and there we go. We see the windmills handed over. Excellently done. What a team player. You love to see it. Not only coming up with some inventive strategies, but also showing us how powerful being a team a team player can be. A, a player that was effectively removed from the game for the next 15 minutes as they tried to rebuild their base has now been given a second chance at life here. <laughs> Meanwhile, Sheldons have been used to a devastating effect over here, as well as a Persecutor, the pop-up Plasma Artillery, uh, popping up in its shell, but also these artillery high, high, high up into the sky as they rain down, and you can see the effect is devastating. Whoops, landed on the spider over here. Yeah, you can see it took it down below 50% health, meaning it'll take less than two shots to take one of those down. I believe these do more damage when they're in their popped-up mode, but they fire less frequently. Uh, which sort of makes sense, right? It's kind of like a orbital bombardment. <laughs> Although if you put in the energy to accelerate some sort of projectile that high into the sky, I wonder if it wouldn't just be better to accelerate that projectile directly into your enemy's face. 
Let me know down below. Maybe there's a uh, maybe there's a real physics physics inclined individual down there who could let me know the uh, maths behind it. Physics was never my strong suit, despite appreciating it immensely. It was never my uh, expertise in schooling. I was definitely a programming kind of kind of a fellow, kind of a kind of a chap. <laughs> Meanwhile, more aggression down here. These are just T1 mixed in with a couple of fiends. Uh, the fiends can definitely be dangerous, but we only have two of them right now, so it's not especially daunting. The Sheldon, however, are going to be much more dangerous as they continue to lay down suppressing fire up north here. Frostwind is looking to crawl themselves out of this, but they really desperately need to improve the eco. We're going for energy converters, but what we really need is this advanced fusion reactor online. I don't think we need any more energy converters. I think we certainly should just take a break from producing units for just a second. Uh, try and deal with this, maybe get a spy bot out. We do have a sharpshooter out. We don't have the energy to fund it though. That's another big problem. Yeah, we're really just lacking energy up north. And I think if we stop producing energy converters, it would probably solve that issue pretty quickly here. You can see a uh, couple hundred energy per second going into this, uh, going into this energy converter here, uh, as well as a couple hundred more from the constructor. Yeah, energy, energy stall is immense up north here. Looks like more windmills were handed over eventually to MTIW so that they could thoroughly produce units out of this lab here. For some reason they've stopped, but I would love to see some spy bots spread out here. I don't think spamming the hounds is the ideal solution. It'll probably work pretty well, but I don't think it's ideal. Meanwhile, all those Mauser as well as those Lightning Tank were hounded into a... I shouldn't say hounded. It's a, it's a unit name. <laughs> they were grouped together into a bit of a, uh, well, not a strike force per se, more of a, uh, a siege force here as they are raining, wow, devastating fire down into the back line here. You can see all of those Mauser pointing their noses to a snozzle on the enemy as quickly and as devastatingly as possible. The little corkscrew of the metal extractor for the uh, Cortex faction getting blown to bits here. <laughs> as it flies away. Uh, those Mauser, man, they are devastating. Really, really difficult to deal with those. Tons of hounds moving forward here, as well as some gunslingers. The gunslinger will be torn down. It doesn't itself have a tremendous amount of health, uh, but it does have a regenerative ability, so it can it can sustain itself, but it can't survive. If that makes any sense, <laughs> kind of doesn't. But uh, I think I think you understand the general gist of what I'm trying to say here. Meanwhile, a bunch of tigers have jumped on top of these Mauser. Absolutely excellent engagement here. A bunch of the lightning takes do break away to try and lure the tigers off of the Mauser's backs but the damage is already done, and the Mauser are laying in ruin, and that has got to be a juicy metal field. 7.2 thousand metal lying right there on the battlefield. 3,000 more in wreckage right here, but that is all that the green player is going to need in order to break back into this zone and potentially reclaim that northern northern middle section of the map right there. Right now, the lines are drawn pretty, pretty evenly, actually, although uh, I can't really say that because these metal extractors have been under the control of Wit Abysm for quite a long time, meaning that if the economy scaling in the back line isn't absolutely phenomenal, uh, the, the eco is eventually going to tip in the scales of the blue team, and I think eventually, uh, or essentially, that is what we have seen here. We do have an advanced fusion reactor coming up. I'm just looking for advanced fusion reactors all over the place. Lollington is also starting one up. Are we missing metal? Well, I'll tell you what, there is a way. <laughs> that's a that's a good oh I don't know uh, eighth of a metal or eighth of a fusion reactor sixth of a fusion reactor something like that I'm just saying it's a lot of T1 solar T2 solar more forgivable but even this is pretty metal dense see here nearly 4,000 metal in T2 solar um, which is fine the T2 solar is much much more efficient here but certainly consider it for when you're ready to uh, eat it up and, and go for this T2. We are starting up a fusion reactor, which is quite nice. That's really what you need in order to start that, that T2 production properly is about about a thousand energy and, some, and, and then a little more, maybe, maybe 2000 is probably the actual golden number here. Uh, but we can see it already. We've, uh, we've begun production here. It looks like our eco scaling has hit its peak and we are ready to start producing transports. We're up to only 11 right now, but this number will continue to grow. And, uh, you know, when I when I heard that this might happen, I was like, what are you talking about in Nostradamus? This is on Bismuth Valley. How are you going <laughs> to... How could you do this on Bismuth Valley? That doesn't make any sense. Well, apparently this is how 
you uh, you you help your teammates out enough, and they're going to be able to cover your lane, and you're going to get a tremendous economic cheese. Now, of course, the red team has absolutely no idea what is about to uh, unfurl upon them here. They have they have no idea the devastation that is about to be wrought. Uh, they are just holding on against these massive armies in the meantime. Advanced fusion reactor for Wallington does eventually come up here. It looks like we were thinking about funding it with the uh, fusion reactor here. Not sure why we are still going to disassemble it, though, if we've already paid for it. Maybe we just need the metal to uh, pump out units. That is fair, and some sharpshooters would do lovely, uh, lovely, lovely work here. We do have spy bots. I'm also curious why we're not using those a little bit more effectively here. Certainly we could be moving the spy bots away from our visible units so that they're not accidentally caught in the uh, friendly fire there. Or the field of fire, I should say. But also we could be paralyzing these towns and just... Uh, certainly we could do a tremendous work with it. Two of these two of these EMP bots could paralyze this entire field of hounds, and it would not take much more than, than that in order to uh, get these tigers on top and then wipe out that entire army here. Sounds like some sumos. Yep, we have some sumos down south here. Pushing in from Gold Police, who is just using that uh, economic advantage from capturing these metal points here and pushing forward more and more and more. And uh, their, their sumos are going to be devastating to these T1 units. Skywarm is a little bit behind the curve here. We're still producing T1 units, and I think that's just a big waste of metal. T2 is going to be so much more efficient. We really need to get some T2 units out in the field. I would love to see a couple of Webbers produced here. Those are the T2 Reclaim EMP Spiders. Uh, I would love to see a couple of welders, maybe some hounds, maybe some sharpshooters, a gunslinger or two couldn't hurt either. All that good stuff and more would definitely be worthwhile to invest in. Meanwhile, a decloaked spy bot has uh, managed to find a, uh, a laser turret that was hiding up here. This is really where our eyes need to be. We can see the numbers continuing to grow here as production is uh, starting to slow down. Uh, for for the laser turrets, I mean the uh, the beamers are ready. Yeah, all the uh, all the construction planes are moved over to the side. How many uh, how many beamers do we have here in total? 161. Okay, so we're ready. Oh no, not quite. We actually don't have quite enough yet, but we are getting pretty close. Costs about ooh, I want to say about 300 metal in order to run all four of these uh, all four of these air labs simultaneously. So uh, we've, we've hit just the right amount of economy here. You can see we are at a glorious one, two, three, four, five, six, seven advanced fusion reactors running a whole bunch of uh, energy converters here. And that's basically going to be enough in order to uh, provide the, the necessary metal in order to find a decent output of these, uh, these, these T2 transports here. 142, we're getting devastatingly close. Looks like a big nuke landed right here wiped out a large portion of uh, the army for the Seafoam player here. Either that or something else wiped out that army because I do not see it anymore. No traces of it left on the map. I can see a whole bunch of tigers here, so maybe there was a brutal engagement right there in the middle of the map, but the Mauser that are still out for Nostradamus are covering covering with enough firepower to uh, continue devastating that lane. <laughs> Oh, uh, this is just brutal to see. Yep, the uh, Hornets are pushing in here, and they can do a tremendous amount of damage. They finally jump on top of this. Ooh, they don't finish off the Persecutor. I was trying to say... Oh, there we go. <laughs> the commander was like, oh, a couple of Hornets, that's fine. And then it looks up into the skies to only witness the Sor Bomba headed in its direction. We have enough of these transports at this point, but maybe we're build building a couple extra. We want to make sure that we have enough to uh, soak up some shots. It's actually not a bad idea. It's definitely worth it to have a, little, a couple extra in order in, in order to make sure that we have a uh, have a, a little bit of a health shield here. Also for wave two. Yep, looks like the order is given to pick up all of these turrets, and they will be grabbed. <laughs> and they will all move over here. It's about time, ladies and gentlemen. Are you ready for round two? Oh, maybe not. Maybe we're maybe we're building up a really huge front here. Either way, these front lines are getting caved in here. The blue team is holding their own. There was a little bit of a hound counterattack down south, but it looks like the sumos will repel them, as well as a hero fiend who does go down. <laughs> Standing strong against the dark. A couple of these, uh, these airplanes here, these aerial construction bots, are used to reclaim some of the metal wreckage off of this field. That's quite nice. 
We don't really need him in the back line anymore since we have plenty to uh, plenty to spare over here. So I think that's definitely a good idea. You can see that every time Nostradamus is, is building a new set of these beamer turrets, the uh, <laughs> the uh, the metal starts to take a plunge here. We do have some fighters coming up, and I think that's a good idea. We do already have the air labs, and we have tons and tons of transport. So uh, I think getting a couple of fighters out on the field is definitely a great idea, especially if the enemy has an air wall. Their fighters are going to be focusing a whole lot more on uh, your, your transports, which means that your fighters are going to get an absolutely phenomenal engagement. Meanwhile, Rotter doing a tremendous amount of damage to this Titan because of the flanking bonus here. Tons and tons of these uh, spiders are shooting their rockets at this Titan, and if it's just going to stand still, that's going to be a tremendous engagement. The middle of this map is beginning to cave, and that Titan is the only thing holding this entire army back. <laughs> the lone Titan holding against them all. A bunch of Tigers have broken through the line here. Wit Abysm is probably going to have to sacrifice the commander in order to stop that. Oh, let's see here. We could... Oh, uh, yeah, I see Nostradamus thinking about sending in some of the uh, transports here. We do have some gunships as well, and those will do decently to uh, counteract this. Yeah, those Hornets do a decent amount of damage. Those uh, double double Stabo shots they, they, they fire are uh, pretty devastating here. A bunch, bunch of that wind production goes up in smoke here for MTIW, but that's okay because they've already transitioned into fusion reactors. The Hornets aren't going to kill this very quickly, though, and they are getting dangerously close to this back line. Yep, some Hounds were produced in desperation, but again, I think Gunslingers are probably where we want to go here. We're getting dangerously close. There is a wall of Beamers, so it's not like they could really touch any of the production back here. <laughs> More so, the danger is that they scout it. Uh, how much have they seen from that? I should probably take a look here. Looks like they haven't seen the play quite yet. Things are starting to get spicy. A lot of those constructors were pulled away at the moment there. Means that we only have 105, well, only have 105 beamers, right? <laughs> it's, a, it's an astounding amount here. We have 161 already crammed into transports over here, and we are getting ready for another batch. Uh, we're just about ready here. We have 114, so we're basically ready to go pick all these up. Just want to see what the command is here. Or are we just going to send these in first and then... I'm not sure if we're going to send all these in first, or if we're just going to uh, pick up these, uh, these more of these turrets with them. Looks like at least at the moment these are moving towards... Oh, okay, there we go. So yeah, we are going to pick up all the turrets with these transports, and then we are going to add them to the pile. <laughs> we'll check in on the uh, total lump sum amount here in just a second. It looks like the red team is just barely holding on. T2 units are finally out for our red player. Kind of behind here in that sense. We are resurrecting on the front lines, but I think reclaiming is probably going to be a better move here um, as we just have no metal in the bank and we absolutely desperately need to eco if we want to claw our way out of this mess. Meanwhile, there is a juggernaut up here, but it is accompanied by a literal nothingness. So uh, if, if there's a single commander around, it's going to have a field day degunning that juggernaut and bringing it down. The total transport, uh, the, whoa, uh, that was not the right move here. The total transport number is going to be 287. And this forbidden text I can see. <laughs> not sure, not sure what he's talking about here. But the transports begin their move and you can see the uh, command is given. And by the way, in case you're curious how to get this, you just hit U and then shift and right click and drag like a madman. Uh, all over the place and it's going to spread out these dots they're going to put them in everywhere that doomsday will fall upon the <laughs> so you can see this entire line is emp down into non-effect as the beamers are dropped in every possible location the transports is paralyzing everything else <laughs> the ruin the carnage the devastation as the Nostradamus maneuver is completed. <laughs> There's not even enough power to fund all of these. Oh my goodness. Everything is going up in smoke. The beavers are working on everything that they can, firing everywhere. Every base is in complete ruin. Total dismay. The beamers working on these advanced fusion reactors. There goes one of the bases. Here's another one. <laughs> 
Oh my goodness. Does Beyond All Reason get much better than this? Plenty of anti-air over here, so that is going to shut down most of the uh, planes that we're trying to push in, at least to the orange player's base. But certainly everyone in the middle of the map has been completely devastated here. The T3 facility has been shut down, meaning that this Titan will no longer be able to uh, be able to pop out here. Looks like we're going to uh, reorganize and try and redistribute some of our force to the red player down south. <laughs> Sending in the transports for that all-powerful EMP. The red base goes up in smoke to the power of the beamer. <laughs> Absolutely brutal. Because you know Stradamus has nowhere near enough energy to actually produce out of all this now as all of the- Oh, I see. All the fusion reactors have been given to, uh, to the teammates here. <laughs> we said that's enough that's enough for now we're going to uh we're going to be calling gg in this game and uh certainly that is a game ending move the base up north is paralyzed and it is just the the uh economy centers that remain here for the orange player i guess we have a t3 facility producing as much as we can over here but will it be enough i don't think so not against the hordes of the abductors <laughs> moving forward. They have that paralyzer beam, right? So even though a couple of them will fall here, will get shot down by the anti-air, uh, the, 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 the next, you know, 150 or so that move in will just uh, paralyze everything else, and eventually you have no anti-air remaining because it's all blasted down in a beautiful moment of carnage. Well... Eventually, anyways. <laughs> More of these abductors moving in over here. They do manage to paralyze some of these, uh, some of these advanced fusion reactors, which does do a number on the economy of the uh, the enemy team here. Because what that effectively means, ooh, there goes all oh, that orange economy right there. What that effectively means is that you run out of energy. Um, and a whole lot of your production facilities, and if, especially if you're trying to put up more anti-air defenses, all of that relies on energy production, believe it or not. <laughs> uh, the Juggernaut surrounded by Razorbacks, and finally it looks like the red team will GG out. Showing us once again that the Nostradamus maneuver, as uh, Gold Please has put in the chat, absolutely beautiful. Well played, sir. Cementing yourself in the bright works. Hall of Fame for one of the best game-ending maneuvers we get the privilege to enjoy seeing. Let me know what you thought about this play down below. I know I absolutely loved it. Thanks a ton for sending this in, Nostradamus. It was a treat to see it played. And also, interesting to see the evolution of it, because the other one was very, very economic-focused. Not a lot of units on the field. This time, we actually saw a lot of units out on the field, and I think, it's, uh, I think that was definitely a contributive evolution. I really love to see it. But let me know what you think. That's right, you, right there down below. And I hope you have a phenomenal rest of your day.